Flex Power Tools new 24 volt trim router. This is the Flex FX 4221 and it's their 24 volt brushless trim router. Now this has some really cool features on it uh, that are a bit different than other routers out there, except you may look at it and say, well, it looks a lot like the DeWalt and well, it does look a lot like the DeWalt, uh, but they are different routers. And again, there's a couple of key features on here that are separating this from the rest. First off, we're operating on the 24 volt battery platform, which if you look at 18 and 20 volt batteries, they're the same batteries. It doesn't matter whether you know they're 18 or 20, uh, it's just read on whether it's nominal voltage or max voltage. Anyway, regardless, a 24 volt battery actually has an extra cell in it until you get to the lithium pack batteries and they have packs. But anyway, we won't get into that science yet, but just trust me that 24 volts are in a different category than 20 volt or 18 volt batteries. So we get an extra cell in there, more power, uh, more power output to the motor as well. So get a brushless motor, turns this up to 31,000 RPM. And we have a six speed dial right here on the trim router where we can actually dial. In fact, by the way, there's also half, half increments as well. So you see four, four and a half, five, and that's going to give us RPM from 16,000 all the way up to 31,000. So you can dial in the RPM that you want, or you can put it on max and just run with it. We get a quick release collar right here. So when this slides down, it actually locks into this and then we get uh, macro and micro adjustment. So you get your macro where you're, you can raise and lower this very quickly uh, with this here. Uh, and then here we have a lot finer dial right here where you can dial in your measurements and it's going to be accurate up to the 64th of an inch. And you can see this little groove right here is where these tabs then lock onto. And we'll put that on here in a second. Now this little tool, I was excited to see when I saw this. A lot of people probably have no idea what this is, uh, but as soon as I saw it, I knew exactly what it is. And basically it's a centering jig. It's not a top, it doesn't work well as a top. Uh, and this piece here is plastic. And that's another thing. I was thinking that this was plastic as well when I first saw it, it is not. This is steel. So this is actually going to mount in your router. And this is going to slide down like this. And basically it's to center your base plate on. So. That's not crazy important when you're just wanting to center a bit in that large hole right there. However, when you start going to like this, when you want to run a bushing and use like an upcut bit or something like that, then it becomes very important because now you don't have much clearance here. And if you're off center, well, you're going to break bits and have flying things towards your eyeballs and everything else. We'll show you how to use this here in a few moments uh, when we actually install a different base plate. One of the other cool things about this is obviously we get two wrenches that we can actually change bits out. Typically, you know, you're going to hold the spindle with the smaller wrench and then turn the collet nut with the larger wrench. So that's still, you're able to do that. There's also a spindle lock right here and it's not a button. And by the way, you have to slide the collar off and then you just pull this down. And now that locks that spindle. And now all you need to do is to turn the collet and actually loosen or tighten that collet nut. And I like that because it's literally locking that spindle. Not only that, if I put in a battery right here, and again, I've got the spindle locked, and I try to hit the power button, it does not allow that tool to, to work. You see it shuts it down, flashes the LED lights, telling me that it's in lock mode. Turn that up, and now I can turn the tool on. We also get a soft start, I like that, in a router. And then also you get the brake that's going to stop it very quickly. Nice large button here on the front side or back side or whatever you wanna call that of the tool that you can press with any of your fingers or press it with your thumb, but easy to get to. It's not a switch you have to switch, it's just a button you need to push. Now, in addition to the typical base plate with the flat side, we also get the larger base plate. 
that also has a different size hole here that's perfect, again, if you're wanting to run uh, certain types of bushings. So this is a smaller hole here, which is gonna be a 1.2 inch internal diameter. And then here on the standard base, gonna give you that one and a half inch internal diameter. Also with the tool, and this is basically with the bare tool, you don't have to buy a kit to get this. You also get the edge guide and you get the dust extraction port as well. And that's gonna help clean things up so you can pull a lot of that dust away while you are routing. And on measurement on here, I believe it's 1.25 inch internal. Yeah, 1.25 and one and a half inch external. So to install the collar, we want to first lift out the locking tab. So now that's unlocked. And then you'll see that we have some pins that stick out in here and that needs to align with these channels right here on the side. One here and one 180 degrees around to here. So you can see it slides down. If I turn it 180 degrees around, will slide down there as well. So you can actually flip this 180 and it still install on the tool without issue. Now, what you wanna do, you wanna make sure that it comes all the way down and locks, because right now it's not locked, because these tabs here, so if you slide it down and put a little pressure, you see it locks into place, or you don't have to put a lot of pressure if you squeeze these tabs and then it'll come down and lock. Now, as I mentioned, for the macro adjustment, if I want to raise and lower this pretty quickly, I can turn this collar here, but then if I want smaller increments, that's where I can turn this one here. And you can see we even get some markings right there on the ring. So basically that's a 16th, that's a 32nd, and that's a 64th. So we get 1 64th adjustments there with the micro ring. And again, we get much larger adjustments with the macro. Once you find the spot you want, lock that down and you're good to go. Now, another thing I like is the edge guard and how easy it installs. You see there's a little slot and tab right there. And so on this, all you have to do is take that little tongue right there and it actually installs right there in that slot. It's a little pressure, that clamps down and then you take this little lever, flip it over, that tightens it down and now you're ready to go and trim some edges. Very simple dust extraction installation as well. So this is going to have a little tongue right here on this outside edge, and it needs to go down in that little slot right there. So we'll just take the bottom edge of the extractor and then come over here with the thumb screw, tighten that down, and now it's mounted on there. And that's gonna do a couple of things. Number one, keep your fingers from going in that hole there, not that you should have them in there. Uh, also enable you to now extract any dust that's coming off of that. We'll see how well that works in a moment. Now while we have this all together, let me pull off this battery. And we'll just get an idea. So without battery, three pounds, nine and a half ounces. That's kind of dressed out. There's no bit in there, uh, but we have the extraction port on. We have the base plate on, the collar on. Uh, so we're at about three and a half pounds, three, three pounds, nine and a half ounces with battery, so with like in this case a two, two and a half amp hour battery, you're looking at four pounds, 15 ounces. So almost five pounds for the complete tool. That's not a light tool. At the same time, handling a router, sometimes it's nice to have a little weight there. Uh, you don't like it to be really top heavy. Um, and in this case, it's pretty neutral because the base does have some weight to it. Um, and I do want to point out, I have pretty large hands and this fits me pretty comfortably, but it is a pretty large base. So I have seen smaller and just to give you an idea. So you're looking at a 3.2 inch diameter on this base. So if you have smaller hands, if you're a smaller guy, smaller gal, then this may be something that may bother you a little bit. I don't know. Uh, but again, it fits very comfortably with me, but it is a pretty large base. I like it because again, it's a nice and 
uh, well-built router. You can kind of feel it in your hand. It doesn't feel too loosey-goosey. Everything's nice and snug. And uh, again, it kind of fills up my hand. So it makes things a lot easier for me for moving things around. It doesn't feel too fragile, if you will. Now let's take a closer look at the other base plate as well as uh, the centering jig. And to do that, we want to remove this plate. So move that out of the way. And now we want to install this plate. Well, there is a little bit of slop in these screws right here. So you can see if I put the screw in here, I can move this around. Well, that's actually a good thing because that enables us to now be able to adjust this plate where we need it. And you'll also see that there's larger screw holes here as well and a smaller diameter also. Pretty obvious which ones you need. But anyway, the reason is you want to be able to adjust this. Now, as I was mentioning, if you were just running a bit in there, it probably wouldn't bother you to just it maybe be off just a touch. However, when you start running a bushing like this, and basically this is to be able to kind of trace out a pattern without digging in, you know, so basically it's cutting down below, it's not cutting up above, and you're going to have an offset of, you know, um, an eighth inch or three sixteenths of an inch or whatever bushing you're using. Anyway, we won't, we won't worry about talking about bushings right now, but basically this will install on this plate. Well, if that's not dead center, what's going to happen is you're either going to ruin a bit like this, it's not going to find center, or you're going to have shrapnel flying around where it's trying to dig into this brass. Anyway, those are all bad things. But if we find center, then we don't have to worry about that. And here's how we do that. So first, we're going to remove our collar. Do that by unlocking it, squeeze the tabs, pull it off. We want to take this. Remove the cone, lock our spindle, tighten that down. You want that nice and snug? Okay, we're good there. Put our collar back on, get that locked. And by the way, I also recommend going ahead and locking this down because sometimes you can see that ring move just a little bit. And now you want to run your screws down enough to where they're close, but you still have some movement here on this base plate. And that's when you want to take your cone, slide that down. And I like to just kind of get it down there firm, move that around, make sure we're kind of engaging the whole circle. And then that's when I'll come back and now tighten down my screws. And then I may give it an eyeball to make sure that we don't have any clearance issues on any of those sides. Now I can remove my centering jig, install my bit, which by the way, I don't recommend installing a bit with a battery in it, like I just did. I need to install my bushing. And now you see that bit found center right away. Lock everything down, and now you're ready to go. Okay, first up, we just have a very simple roundover bit, probably uh, one of the most used or uh, most popular router bits just to soften up edges. This is a quarter inch, and I'm just going to take it up, or actually take it to where it's just going to about halfway engage and uh, provide us just a little bit of a a soft roundover, if you will. So more than just kind of sanding the edge or knocking off the edge, but not quite that full quarter inch. Clamp that down and now we should be good to go. I've got my battery in. I'm running the two and a half amp hour. You can get this kitted with a three and a half amp hour, but unless you're doing long runs, I don't think you need that. I'm going to set the speed dial. Let's just go with four. And then when I'm ready, all I have to do is reach up and push this button right here. Again, I can do that with any of my fingers or whatever's comfortable to touch this. And here we go. By the way, uh, you see the open window right here. We're gonna run this without dust extraction first, and then we'll come back and hook up the dust extractor and see what a difference it makes.
So you can see I really didn't take much off there at all. So let me go ahead and run that down a little bit more. Use my micro adjustment here. There we go. So again, not taking much off whatsoever. So go, let's go ahead and uh, we'll go full engagement on this. Run this down just, just before. And so now you can see we really knocked off the edge there. And by the way, on these, on these roundover bits, you can also go kind of beyond the, the bit and kind of change the profile of what you're getting. I'm sure if you're a woodworker, you absolutely know this, but just to show you. So now you get that little stepped edge right there. So you're literally using the whole profile of, of the router bit and you've got quite a bit more. I don't want my finger near there with that battery in there, but you see you've got about a quarter inch step there as well that you can really you know, provide that different profile, the round over and that little step there if you want that showing. If not, obviously you can keep that tucked up in there and just provide that round over. Now let's go ahead and install our dust extraction. Very simple to do. Here we go. Go back to about the same adjustment. All right, so we've got our board turned around with a fresh edge here and uh, use our dust extraction. Now it's very tough when basically you've got half of this hole here exposed, even with dust extraction running. So as fast as these router bits are turning, you're not going to be able to pull all that in. Now, if I had an upcut bit in there, I should be able to return a lot more of that. Uh, but again, you're not going to be able to collect everything, especially when you have half that edge hanging off on the side without suction. Anyway, still a nice clean. So the other side, I think it was a little softer wood. Uh, this is some hardwood, some oak right here. Still a nice clean cut. Works very well. And that's in speed four. So I've changed out the bit to my spiral upcut bit. So as you can see here, it's got the spiral flutes on it. And that's going to direct those chips upward. And so I don't know, I'm going to cut probably a quarter inch channel. And I've got my edge guide on here as well. I just set it at a probably an inch and a half away from the edge. And let's see how this does. We'll also hook up our dust extraction. And with having uh, the whole plate actually covered with the wood with the vacuum running or the dust extraction running, it picked up just about every piece of wood it cut. And I'll put the camera on where you can actually kind of see that vortex working inside there, especially with that upcut bit. Love uh, using those. And it cut this channel quite easily in a, more than a quarter inch. I'm probably about 5 sixteenths inch deep there. So now we'll just show it on this uh, two by four, but you should be able to see in this window what's going on here with the upcut bit as well as the extraction.
So you can see how well that was picking that up. And again, no residual left there in our channel. A little bit right where we started, but uh, really doing almost 100% of getting all that dust. Very clean cuts with that upcut bit and with the dust extraction installed. So now we've got in our flush cut bit, or it's kind of like a profiler, but the bearing is here on the bottom. Now you can get these type of bits, these flush cut bits, uh, with the bearing riding on the bottom or at the top. And what that's going to enable you to do is right now, the profile or the pattern will need to be on the bottom and what it's cutting is above it. Uh, the opposite way would be your pattern would be on the top if your bearings at the top and what it would be cutting would be down below. So you can see I've got a piece of hardwood here with just kind of a funky shape there. And what I want to do, uh, let's, we'll probably cut some half inch plywood. So let me bring this up and we'll get the base plate to where it's going to cut about a half inch. And then that bearing is going to ride on that profile. And so basically what's going to happen is we're going to go around and we're going to cut and that bearing is going to be riding on that edge there. And so then when we get done, our shape should be the same as this profile here. So we'll run dust extraction on this, but however, since uh, this large hole here will probably be overhanging in some of this cut, we'll, we'll probably still have a lot of dust that's not captured. So now you can see that our plywood is mostly the same profile as the hardwood. Now, the difference is this actually moved on me. You probably saw that because I didn't have it clamped over here, but just showing you that we can basically get the same profile as the shape below. This type of bit also works excellent for like trimming formica and things like that, where you're actually gluing something to the top and you need to trim off that little edge uh, to get it perfect. This is going to ride right along that edge and give you a nice smooth trim. And if you ever want to go in the sign making business and you can't afford a CNC machine, there you go. Not too impressive, I know, but you got to start somewhere. Good price on this at $199 and even the $349 kit. Uh, also, if you will register the tool uh, within 30 days of purchasing, you will get the Founders Lifetime Warranty. Keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok.